I've been dancing around this, but we obviously want to know the big question, US election, who's going to win? Spirit, when I've always looked into this, has always said that Donald Trump would win twice. And this has gone back as, uh, as far as 2015. So I definitely uh, was very much behind him in 2016 and predicted a, an election win for him then. Uh, I do believe that the 2024 elections is Donald Trump's uh, favour. It's definitely the ball's in his court right now as well. So the next few months in particular, as we all can imagine, are going to be very fluid. There's going to be a lot of sort of surprises that are going to be coming up. There's going to be a lot of change in... Uh, sort of what we're being presented with. But I do believe that Donald Trump will become uh, the victor from the 2024 election. I wasn't sure what you are going to say. That is very interesting. Are there going to be some gaffes from Kamala Harris? What, the, well, what do you, else can you tell us that we might see between, between now and November? Yeah. Well, sort of as we were mentioned before, Kamala Harris is a very sort of stage-managed character. There mm. is a lot of smoke and mirrors behind her as well. So... Uh, the DNC and also her campaign managers are going to be very sort of wary about putting her up in front of a press conference. I mean, we even saw recently that she hasn't been in attendance uh, for some uh, larger functions, especially uh, with uh, the Blood Journalists Association this morning even. So I think it really is very interesting to see what will happen with her. I think if she is given the opportunity to speak, even in the, the debate setting, if that does eventually occur or not, uh, she's not necessarily a character... They can speak well in public. Uh, when Donald Trump goes off tangent, we see some of his best work really coming out. Kamala mm. Harris is the polar opposite of that. So uh, I think she's going to be pretty gaff prone in the lead up to the election as well. A lot of her history will also be brought up. A lot of her ascendancy mm. into the Democrat Party will be brought up as well. And that doesn't work in her favour. OK, look, I could talk to you about the US election <laughs> for hours, but we, we do have to move on. There's been a significant development in the conflict in the Middle East in the past 24 hours with a Hamas leader being killed. What do, you, what do you see when you look at the conflict in the Middle East? Yeah, well, again, I mean, this does lead into one of my other predictions for 2024, which was a rise in a lot of sort of assassinations of world leaders and uh, strong political figures as well. So when we're looking in, into the future of uh, the Middle East, especially the near future as well, I mean, with the recent assassination, as you mentioned, of uh, Hamas chief uh, Ismail Haniyeh, uh, you know, it really is on the tent hooks there. The Middle East in general, as we all are very aware, is a very fluid situation. Uh, I do predict that Iran will uh, strike back on Israel, whether that's a direct attack on the Israeli state. Uh, we may also see targets of uh, soft targets throughout the world even as well. I think there needs to be special attention also paid to the Olympics as well, with not only Israeli visitors but also the Israeli athletes. Mm. Uh, but I don't think it's really going to be that far away until we do see a response from the Iranian state. Uh, and in terms of uh, broader conflict in the Middle East as well, I think, uh, you know, even recently the Australian government has warned Australian citizens to again leave Lebanon. Yeah. Uh, so we are going to see, and it is also a prediction of mine again, a, a wider conflict again with Hezbollah, uh, the Lebanese uh, militant group. So obviously there was a rise up there with the Israeli-Gaza uh, conflict in October last year. So, you know, Israel and... Lebanon have been in conflict uh, in a very minor state since that moment. But I do believe, especially over August and September, we will see a sort of a more broader conflict coming in there as well. Uh, the head of Hamas in Gaza, Sinwa, and also the head of Hezbollah, uh, Hassan Nasrallah, uh, I would say would be very much at the top of the target list for assassination as well. Do you see them being assassinated? Uh, inevitably. Inevitably. Yeah. You can't say how soon? If I was them, I wouldn't be sleeping well, put it that way. OK. Yeah. Can I get your thoughts on China and Taiwan? Uh, China and Taiwan's always been a very interesting topic for me as well. Uh, I think, again, with American weakness on display in terms of foreign policy, but also their military capabilities as well, uh, China and Taiwan really does come into the focus point there as well. I've always predicted, especially over the last sort of 12 months in particular, that uh, it will be inevitable that we will sort of see a form of conflict there as well as uh, China does pull Taiwan back into its uh, satellite influence. Uh, I don't necessarily predict that that would occur this year as well. Again, it's very dependent on the outcome of the American election. Uh, but I think inevitably, especially in this decade, we will see uh, a, a form of conflict again in uh, Asia there as well.